of the meaning of Christmas through the eyes of love. And I think we need to be focused and turn toward that in our own daily lives. But this, I mean, we're going to look forward to Bethlehem, and we see the babe lying in the manger, and we see what see it for what it is, a gift of love. Now, you've probably heard that the greatest gift that has ever been be given by anyone is the gift of love. In my experience, this has been very true. How do you feel about it? If you would please think back for a moment, think back to the Christmas gifts that you really, really remember. Maybe even back to the one Christmas gift that stands out more than any of the others. What made that gift so special? My guess would be that the reason that the gift is so special is because there was a great deal of love behind the gift. It reminds you of a story of a young boy about nine years old. And he had one toy that he wanted more than anything else in the world. And you remember years ago that the, the, the toy world, there was a common thing that everybody wanted to have, and they were called transformers. I don't know if you remember that word or not, and see it there, the transformers all over the place. The Autobots, and this, those kind of things. Well, they were vehicles that transformed into robots and then into vehicles. And they were toys that truly were more than the eye could meet. And it, his, this one little boy, it was his deepest, deepest Christmas wish that year that he would pay the, have the fearless leader of the Transformers, the Optimus Prime. That's what he wanted for Christmas. Optimus Prime, the, big, the leader of all of the Transformers. Well, the only problem with that request is every little boy in the whole United States wanted the Optimus Prime as their Christmas gift as well. And by the time the parents started looking for that gift all over, they couldn't find it anywhere. Heartbroken, they tried to reason with their son, but wouldn't you rather have the Bumblebee Transformer for Christmas than Optimus for Prime? And the boy began to slowly get the hint that he was not going to get an Optimus Prime for Christmas. So disappointing. On Christmas morning, he didn't have any hope left that there, would, that there would be an Optimus Prime under the tree. So that morning began to feel a little less magical than the Christmases in the past. And he opened his presents one after another and was happy with everything he got. He was content with Christmas. And the last gift was in, was in a box that really looked like it could be very well be a sweater. The box was perfectly sized for a sweater, and he began to think about a sweater when he opened it. But through some magical luck, the sweater box did not have a sweater in it at all. It had an Optimus Prime Transformer inside of it. Now, if you can imagine a nine-year-old going ballistic at that particular point, there was so much joy, so much happiness when that little boy saw the Optimus Prime. About a week before Christmas, his uncle managed to find one and gave it to his parents. So they gave that gift of love to their son. The Transformer was a magical gift that will always be remembered by that young man. But even more amazing in this story is knowing how much love went into that gift, how much effort went into that gift, how much his parents really wanted him to have that very special Christmas gift, that gift of love. That's just how some gifts are. Filled to the brim with love. Maybe there may be one or two of you out there who can empathize and sympathize with the situation. Have you ever been given a gift that meant even more than it probably, that meant more to you than it probably did to the person that you were giving the gift to? Were there where there was much of yourself invested in that gift that made it so special for you to give it to someone else that they didn't get as much out of it as you did. That is a pure gift of love. That is what the gift of Jesus should be like for each one of us as we journey to this, through this Advent season. A gift straight from God, filled to the brim with love for you and for me. A gift that had so much of God invested in it that it was God. It was God who took all of his love, put it in a box, placed it under a tree with your name on it. The gift was only his son. 
a gift that we know so that he a gift that we know he loved so deeply, and yet he still gave him to you and to me as a gift of love. It was not only a gift of love, it was a gift of his greatest love, a sacrifice, a gift of sacrifice. Back before there were vaccines to cure deadly diseases, one of the best weapons that doctors had to combat diseases was the blood from a close relative who had survived the same disease. Now the relative's blood would, would, have, would already have the natural antibodies to help him cure from the disease. Well back in those days, this story, there was a story of a very sick little girl. And the doctor went and saw the little girl and realized that she was very sick in her hospital bed. And he knew that she was not going to be able to survive much longer. His only hope was that she could receive from someone who had recovered from the same disease. And it just so happened that she had an older brother who had recovered from the same disease who was a matching donor to his sister. The doctor found the family very anxious. And he knelt beside the small boy and said, Johnny, your sister needs your blood to make her well. Would you be willing to give your blood so that she can live? Johnny's eyes grew very big, and the doctor watched well that, with a fear that was coming over that he thought he could see. But the little boy hesitated only long enough to swallow, get that lump out of his throat, and said, Sure, doctor, I'll do it. After the needed amount of blood was taken from Johnny's small arm, he remained quiet for a few moments as he had been instructed. Then he stood up and softly asked the doctor, he said, Well, doctor, when do I die? Only then did the doctor realize the extent of the child's sacrifice. Johnny was offering his life to his sister. Not just the blood, but he thought he was going to die after he gave his blood for her. A gift of self-sacrifice, a gift of self-offering, a gift of perfect love. That is what the crucifixion of our Lord was. Where he gave his blood for you and for me so that we could have eternal life. When he rose from the dead, that was a gift of perfect love. You know, God loves you so much that he wants, you, wants to give you the very perfect, the greatest gift that he could possibly give you, and that is the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, the gift of peace forever. And that came through his son, Jesus Christ, and that is the same son that we are preparing for this Advent season. That is the same son that awaits for us in Bethlehem. That is what we should be clinging to this week and this that, and during this season. That is where our hearts should be, fully realizing well, how great and amazing the gift is that, it, that awaits for us in Bethlehem, that we're preparing so hard for in our church. Many preparations have been done already, and many more yet to come. And we read, for unto you this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the born, Lord, is born. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.